All right. So to look then at this last bit, this last piece of uh, the section, um, I want to I, I want to sort of make sense of want to make sense of the the image that I've incorporated. All right. Um, Remember what he's saying is what Nietzsche is saying, and this is in note uh, 113b. 113b. Let's just jump there really quick. 113b. Uh, it's pretty small, pretty small note, right? Faith in progress. Remember, we've been spending quite a bit of time trying to make sense of what he means by progress, right? So faith in progress in the lower spheres of intelligence, um, it appears as ascending life. But in the, the um, but this is self-deception. In the higher spheres of intelligence, it's descending, um, descending life. So, with respect to progress, we can see that progress uh, for Nietzsche is split, right? Pro and this is the image that I have, right? So we have progress. Oh, gee, that's this idea of progress. But insofar as we're talking about progress, we have sort of uh, a split in the notion of progress. We have a higher sphere of intelligence, right, and a lower sphere. We know from what we've done so far in the analysis that the highest sphere of intelligence is informed by nature, right, and we know from the lower you know from what we've done before, that the lower sphere of intelligence is informed by morality. M-O-R-A-A-L-I-T-Y. So nature informs the higher sphere of intelligence, morality informs the lower sphere of intelligence. Also, we recognize that with respect to progress, we're going to be talking about its relationship to time. Okay. Um, what we get from this recognition is we recognize that we'll start on the bottom and then we'll work our way up. At the lower sphere of intelligence, that is the, the sphere of intelligence that is informed by morality with respect to this notion of progress. This is how you have different conceptions of progress. By progress, remember we don't want to equivocate, right? By progress, do we mean the highest sphere? of intelligence with respect to progress, or by progress do we mean the lower sphere of intelligence with respect to progress. So again, what Nietzsche is doing is he's further complicating our understanding of the conception of progress, right? Um, the higher sphere of intelligence informed by nature, lower sphere of intelligence informed by morality. What we get from the lower sphere as a product of progress, so the product then, the consequence of progress for the lower sphere of intelligence, um, for Nietzsche, becomes morality, right? That which is moral. We get the what's known as the anti-biological. And we get a weaker, and we get a weaker state of affairs, right? So these, these characteristics, right, are consequences of a lower sphere of intelligence, right? So with respect to progress, is there progress? Is there moral progress? Yes. Has anti-biology progress? Yes. Has a state, a weaker state of affairs progressed? Yes. It's a regression with respect to the idea of humanness, right? But it's the progression, it's the, the progression of this moral imperative, right? Moral, the moral imperative has improved, it has progressed insofar as there's more morality. It's progressed insofar as there are more sort of anti-biological, anti-nature based arguments, anti-nature based or um, um, anti-biological stances that are informed by social judgments, to be technical, right? So the lower spheres of intelligence, um, there is a sense in which we can talk about progression, right? But these senses of progression are antithetical to, right, that's antithetical to the higher spheres of intelligence. These higher spheres of intelligence, as we said before, is informed by nature. 
and some of the some of the characteristics, this is not just all, but some of the characteristics that I'm going to list are in direct opposition to, right? So in opposition to um, the moral would be the immoral, right? right? So these, these you can see that these concepts are, are, um, are oppositional, right? The immoral is a consequence of progress from assuming nature as your higher sphere of intelligence, right? I'll say that again. The immoral is a progress of assuming nature as our higher sphere of intelligence. Not the easiest concepts to get, I'm presenting it like this so it's, it's, it's easy to understand hopefully now. To get to this point um, for me was a bit difficult, but the whole point is it's so that you have this as a given now, right? You have this knowledge as a given. Now, when you go to read Nietzsche, when you go to write your papers, when you go to, you know, publish or whatever it is you plan on doing with respect to Nietzsche, you have this as a given. Imagine what you'll be able to do. You'll be able to do way more than I'm able to do, right? And that's the whole point. This is, this is in a sense, my contribution to the discipline of philosophy, right? Is to, I want this to be a given, right? So that you recognize that with respect to progress, right? Moral morality is a progress, right? There is moral progress. Immorality is also progress. How can we make sense of the claim? It seems that it's contradictory. Well, with respect to what aspect of progress, right? Are you talking about the highest, higher sphere of intelligence? With respect to the higher sphere of intelligence, immorality becomes the consequence of um, um, natural progression, right? This natural progression, right? This is the consequence. With respect to antibiology, obviously its corollary is going to, or not its corollary, its, its opposite is going to be um, nature or biology, right? The natural. And with respect to that which is weak, its opposite will be strength. Right? So Nietzsche looks at strength as being um, a consequence of the natural progress of this higher sphere of intelligence. That this is a weaker state of affairs than this, right? This being a stronger state of affairs as a consequence of nature informing our, our higher um, sphere of intelligence. So it's very important that you sort of see the distinction. I, I've been talking about progress generally, and I talked about how both um, Kant and Rousseau sort of served as, as impediments to, they were sources of regression for the progression of time. And really what began this, if you remember from way back, um, was the discussion that there is a sense in which when we talk about time, time moves forward. But it's, it's inappropriate to say that because time moves forward, the consciousness and the conscious development of human beings also moves forward. No. As time moves forward, we can move backward. And part of that regression is um, embracing a notion of morality. So that morality keeps us back. Right? So if we are attempting to go this way, what makes us, what, what serves as an impediment is morality. What breaks that impediment apart and allows us to progress is uh, a natural account, right? Embracing nature, right? So it's going to be this ongoing um, thesis-antithesis sort of argument in Nietzsche. Um, thesis is going to be morality. Antithesis is going to be nature. And we'll see this, this back and forth between nature and morality throughout all of, um, throughout all of the text. The point being that the assessment of progress isn't as superficial as it may appear. Uh, and the last thing is to really sort of solidify this in um, note 116, and that will end this, um, the penultimate section of, the last section is the next section. The, the, last section, the next section of the um, analysis will be the last section of all of book one. So we're almost, we're right there. We're almost done with all of uh, book one, which is itself, uh, an amazing accomplishment. Um, 16, not all of 16, middle, um, middle paragraph in note 16, we have raised ourselves to the level of honorable thoughts. We have raised ourselves to the level of honorable thoughts. Even more, we determine honor on earth. It's not transcendental, it's on earth. Nobility. All of us are today advocates of life. We immoralists, Right? And I love that, right? We immoralists are today the strongest power. 
you cannot confuse that and think that we, the people who kill people, who are violent, who are evil, are the strongest power. That's a complete misread of Nietzsche. That's absolutely not what he's saying. We, the immoralists, right? We, those who embrace nature, right? To be an immoralist is to embrace nature, to be like nature, to move beyond distinctions of uh, evaluate, evaluative claims, right? Good and bad, right? So the immoralist is not like people that, oh, the immoralists are the strongest, like Hitler and da da da. Obviously, this is, this is, I mean, this was written in 1888, right? So it's, it has nothing to do with being immoral. That's precisely what, remember what I said earlier, he's sort of doing this semiotic twist. He's taking the idea of immorality and he's flipping it on its head, right? He's, it, it creates a huge linguistic schism in our psyche, right? But he's saying immorality is not what you think it is, right? Immorality means a good thing. What does it mean now? It actually is beyond good thing. It means to be natural, to embrace that which we are. So again, to read this, all of us are today advocates of life. We immoralists are today the strongest power. The other great powers need us. We construct the world in our image, right? And that's obviously antithetical to the reference where we are constructed in the image of God, right? So rather than us being in a traditional biblical sense, Christian sense, we sort of being constructed in the image of God, it is the world that is constructed in our image. It's from us that the world has meaning. Um, and that's, that's a super powerful claim. We'll return to this much, much, much later in uh, the analysis. But um, what I wanted to do was to finish um, the second to last section of uh, Will to Power by really hitting home the notion of progress and really hitting home the distinction between how nature influences the higher sphere of intelligence and how morality influences the lower sphere. With that, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.